The Jim Jeffrey Show on Comedy Central covers the most controversial issues through Jim's distinctive brand of comedy and global point of view. The Jim Jeffrey Show podcast, on the other hand, is a slightly more podcasty version. Listen each week as Jim Jeffries and co-host Forrest Shaw sit down with friends and guests to discuss news, politics, and all the things Jim couldn't, wouldn't, and shouldn't say on TV. Subscribe now to the Jim Jeffrey Show podcast and listen to new episodes every Wednesday on your favorite podcast app. Palm is back and available on Verizon. Palm is a small practical companion device that syncs with your existing smartphone, so all your info is seamlessly connected. Palm isn't a replacement for your smartphone, but it has all the same mobility and capability, allowing you to leave your smartphone behind so you can focus on what's in front of you. Go to palm.com to learn more and run to your nearest Verizon store to check out Palm for yourself. <laughs> Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> oh, welcome, friends, on this Christmas Eve. If you're listening to this on that day, if you're listening to it some other time, too bad for you. Too bad for you. <laughs> oh, man, are you? <laughs> A little urchin in here. <laughs> A little chimney sweeping urchin. <laughs> He's got the soot lung, you see. Oh, those poor kids in those books. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if that stuff happened in real life? <laughs> Charles Dickens stuff. I don't mean just the ghosts, but I mean... <laughs> I know he didn't have ghosts in every book. I've read more than one, <laughs> more than one Charles Dickens book. What if it turns out a lot of those characters were ghosts? <laughs> Great expectations. Miss Havisham practically a ghost. That was, like, that was a crazy character. <laughs> And then she died in a wedding cake fire? <laughs> Is that what happened? She kept her wedding cake for too long and it turned into... Kimbling? <laughs> you know, you're supposed to save your wedding topper. That's the top of the cake for those of you not in the marriage game. You save that for a year. You put it in the freezer. And then on your first anniversary, you eat that cake. And we did that. My wife and I did that. And was that cake top freezer burned? You bet your life it was. Did I eat it anyway? Sure I did. It's a very, it's a big divide sometimes between what my wife thinks is acceptable to eat and what I think is acceptable <laughs> to eat. <laughs> because I'm able to eat things and say, yes, this is disgusting and I'm going to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really enjoying it, but it is food. And I started eating it. <laughs> so I'm going to see this thing through. My wife is more discerning. Then look, I guess that's a way to go through life. <laughs> I can't imagine it, but it's fun to get a little peek into <laughs> how other people move through the world. Oh, this tastes like a bunch of chemicals. I'm, if I had one bite, I'm going to put it down and never think of it again. <laughs> hmm, intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> My friends, welcome to Spontaneity Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest or guests onto the program to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then, I invite some improviser pals to join me, if they're not already here, in a narrative improv. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear all the paper sounds, <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully you can hear at least some. <laughs> And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. And that's what he Christmas goes like. 
Well, my friends, I am very pleased that we are continuing a one-year tradition. (laughs) 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 And then out. (laughs) Of having as my guests and improvisers, my friends, we do, we, starting in the new year, we're going to be doing a show the last last Wednesday (laughs) of every month (laughs) at Dynasty Typewriter right here in Los Angeles. Work just Wednesdays. Get into it. It is my friends. Work juice improv. Let's go around the table. We're gonna go in alphabetical order. <laughs> Seated. Kitty corner for me. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Craig Kakowski is here. Hey. Craig, how do you do? How how do you do, sir? Well, I asked you first. Well, I do very well. Well, I, I do, do even better. Oh, <laughs> okay. I won. Well, I see your headphones are of a higher quality than mine. It's fair. They look like they're higher quality. <laughs> you saying you would eat anything and uh, your, the, your wife's take on that reminded me of uh, when we went to a wedding uh, earlier this year and we got a little gift uh, gift bag. Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, one of the items in the gift bag was soap. That's correct. In the shape of a cookie. Yes. <laughs> and our wives were texting each other that evening, informing each other that both you and I had taken a bite yes. out of the soap. <laughs> I've, I've told the story on the podcast. Oh, you have. And uh, I believe in in London. And I asked people, Detroit. "Have you ever in Detroit? Mm-hmm. Have you ever mistaken <laughs> a, a thing that looked like food?" For an actual food. Yeah. And nobody was on board except someone we're going to talk to in a little bit. <laughs> but did you, do you didn't bite all the way through, right? I did. Oh! <laughs> I didn't get that far. I did get a, a mouthful of it. And, and a mouthful! I, I mean, I, I'm not an idiot. Like, I knew it was either a cookie or soap. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> just, just from looking at it. You're both one step ahead of me and one step behind me. In this story, <laughs> I absolutely thought it was food. <laughs> it's, I smelled it. I wasn't sure what it was. I did smell it as well. But I smelled it, yeah. and it smelled like food, which I guess is hey, kudos to the soap makers <laughs> for saying like we should also make it smell like it food. Smelled super sweet. Yes, and it looked very much like a cookie. It looked, and I'm like, this, it looked delicious. But why would you give out a goodie bag that contained no food? This is, <laughs> brother, I am right there with you. I got my teeth into it mm-hmm. and imme- immediately realized something is wrong. <laughs> I did bite off a chunk and get it fully in my mouth. <laughs> and then it immediately revealed itself to be soap. I feel like you must have very powerful jaws because that Thank was you. a solid piece of soap. <laughs> Uh, and then, but then I, I, I kept it and used it as soap over the next week. So, oh, I didn't. It didn't occur to me to do that. I, I threw this piece of Judas food away. <laughs> Full, fully twice, shame on me. Craig, I'm going to turn away from you to look Please. directly across from you next to me. Mark Gagliardi. Is Hello. Now. Hello, my friend. Hi. Let's high five. High five. We can do that because we're sitting right next to you. That's other. right. <laughs> The room was empty when I walked in, and I was like, I'm going to go sit right by Paul so I can high-five him. Mark Eggs, you have just come back from Morocco. Yes. (laughs) Morocco. Did a monkey steal anything from you? Uh, I hope not, but a monkey did (laughs) sit on my shoulder. Is that true? A monkey sat on my shoulder, yeah. Um, And then uh, then, um, I took a picture with the monkey, and then the monkey tugged on my shirt for a long time. Uh, I think it was trying to take my shirt. But it did not succeed in taking my shirt. Did you have to pay for this photo? Yes, I did have to pay for The this monkey photo. was reminding you, this is not free. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, hey, pal, don't try to walk away. <laughs> if I tried to walk away, the monkey would have held firm, planted his little monkey feet, and I would not have been able to get anywhere. Let me ask you a question, because yeah. I, another person I know has been to Morocco and mm-hmm. was in a similar situation. Did this monkey seem healthy to you? The monkey seemed healthy. Um, it did not seem terribly interested in having his picture taken with me. Right. right. Um, this monkey. It was. It was tough to. It was tough for my friend to get a shot of the monkey facing forward, uh, as opposed to just off toward his handler, looking at his handler, going, "When is this going to be over?" Why wouldn't the handler get next to the person who was taking the picture? <laughs> right. So the monkey <laughs> would be looking line. at the handler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, there was a leash too. So the, the oh. monkey was. On oh. So the, the monkey's leash. always on the leash. Monkey's always on the leash. Okay. Yeah. All Diaper right. and a leash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, hey, whatever you're into. Right, you know? Do you know what I mean? Thing? Yeah. <laughs> they got their thing going on. That's great. Yeah. 
Um, had you ever been to Morocco before? I would not. This was my first trip to Morocco. How long were you there? Uh, just a couple of days. Uh, one day in Tangier and one or uh, Tangier or Tangier. I heard it pronounced maybe five different ways. And at one point, uh, asked the table I was sitting at, guys, I'm from Tennessee. How do I pronounce this? Because <laughs> I've said my own name wrong for my whole life. Like, I want to get this right. What? How? It's, it's supposed to be Gagliardi. Oh, that's true. Right. Yes, that's right. Um, it's Mark. And I got, it's, it's Mark. <laughs> and I got, I got five different answers of how to pronounce the city. Um, so I just say Tangier. Give us the three you've been holding back. Well, uh, Tangier. Tanger, uh, Tanger, uh, and there may be Tarje, 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 <laughs> JC <J>. Penney. <laughs> What is the most exotic animal you have been close to? Ever in my life? Yes, probably that monkey. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Mark, I'm going to turn away from you, but I can't get enough marks. It's pronounced Mark. (laughs) Mark Evan Jackson is back then. Hi, everybody. Paul, do not be jealous of my stack of artwork, uh, (laughs) which I've been granted. Um, I think that most of you have been given one original drawing. Yes. Um, I have, I mean, how many? Ten. Ten? I think it may be more than that. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll discuss this with the artist momentarily. Very good. Mark. (laughs) Monkey. (laughs) How many monkeys? Oh, I mean, all the monkeys. (laughs) Have you worked with a monkey? I have uh, been near no, Excluding Conk Skull Island. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> um, I think that I've been on set with monkeys for... Uh, we did a, a series of farmer's insurance commercials uh, yes. years ago, and there was one in bum, particular... Bum, bum, bum. Uh, that had every animal. There were caribou, caribou, and uh, fox, and and uh, owls, and everything. And I feel like there were monkeys there. It must have. It been. makes me a little bit sad. It's the leash, I think, that makes me. Yeah, sad. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the, the diaper. The diaper, not so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you know that without that leash, they would just absolutely get out of there. They'd eat your eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. Too. Oh, did you? Know? <laughs> and then they leave. Oh, did you not know? <laughs> oh, before I leave. <laughs> um, did you ever work with Crystal, the famous monkey, the famous TV monkey? No, but someone seems to have. <laughs> uh, no, put a pin in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm gonna let you explore that fully, more fully later. You and I have both had uh, experience with falcons. True. Yes. <laughs> yes. I. Uh, I did not get to do that. My family does a. Uh, uh, my wife's family, for their 50th wedding anniversary, 55th wedding anniversary, and then recently for their 60th, goes to a big resort uh, every five years in West Virginia, and they offer the same couples, place, the same place. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've done it actually in Ireland once too, done falconry, mm-hmm. um, and that is the, the birds are majestic and wonderful, and it's also sad that they're completely captive. <laughs> <laughs> it is like for for birds especially, if you have the power of flight, yeah, you could go. Anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember being very, I did it for uh, this series of, uh, this like web series kind of that Andy Richter and I did where we traveled. We were, it began, we were supposed to be traveling around the country. And then we traveled uh, in a limited way around California. <laughs> uh, yes. I think we visited three cities. <laughs> sure. Um, for eBay. Somehow this was oh. supposed to promote eBay. Yeah. And uh, at one point we, visited this falconer and I got to have a falcon on my arm. Sure. And it was very scary. Oh, I mean, uh, when you, when they are that close to you, yeah. you realize the proportion and size of their uh, talons and yeah. their, their beaks, which are made to, you know, enter your eye socket yeah. and, and reach pay dirt. They are just <laughs> built... <laughs> They're just built to tear things apart. They're built to tear things and apart. And enjoy them. Yeah. <laughs> I was at once at a child's birthday party, like a like maybe a three-year-old's birthday party in Kings Road Park in West Hollywood. And just as they were bringing out the cake with the candles lit, um, glops of uh, bloody entrails started falling from the tree. And a peregrine falcon had uh, had captured like a morning dove or a pigeon or something and was up there just going, fwonk, fwonk. <laughs> And we're truly like kicking le- the adults are like happy, ah, baby, we're, like kick- <laughs> kicking leaves over bloody sinew. Um, yeah. Mark, I'm going to turn away from you. 
I would. <laughs> and look all the way down the table. Hal Lublin is back. Hey, everybody. Hal, you are filling out today. <laughs> Always. This is 75% of my wardrobe. Hal, like myself, is from Philadelphia. Yes. You're wearing a Philly versus Everybody t-shirt with... Oh, who's registered that, by the way? <laughs> it's a big register, <laughs> registered symbol. This is the 76ers. Oh, they re- oh there? Yeah. Whoever they are, they have uh, contacted every sports team. So yeah. wherever city you go to, yeah. they are against everybody. Yes, absolutely. Yes. It seems like it, that would be a more entertaining league. <laughs> <laughs> if every game was one team versus the rest of the league. <laughs> and then what is your what is your hat? That is a is a uh, Phillies 2008 National League Championship. There hat. we go. Absolutely. Yes. So you're feeling the pride today. Always. <laughs> Always and, and forever. <laughs> How recently? Yes. <sighs> Let's get real. Do it. Oh, yeah. You were in an automobile accident. I was. But you have lived to tell the tale. I walked away. And that's the most important thing. My car did not. Any car accident you can walk away from is a good car accident. Yeah. The the uh, <laughs> the person not involved in the accident who showed up as a witness and was taking pictures of everything, mm. who tried to console me with that, did not work. When you're the middle <laughs> car, not at fault, getting sandwiched, and your car is the only one that cannot drive away, oh. you're like, stop trying to sell me the bright side of this. Let me be dazed and yeah. upset for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stranger. Had, had you ever been in an accident like this before? I have been rear-ended twice before mm-hmm. in cars, uh, but never... In uh, cars. Yes, in cars. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but this is the worst one by far. Sure. Yeah. And, but you're not injured, or are you? I am going to physical therapy, but no broken bones, so that's good. Okay. Like, is it a neck Just thing? soft tissue, neck, back, mm. shoulder, all the fun stuff. Headaches that I, comes along. I almost oh. said something that yeah. reminded me. Something you said reminded me of a popular song, but I cannot say it because of present company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm such a gentleman. <laughs> well, I tried in my way. I'm very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> How, of course, we're very glad that you're safe. Yes. Was there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should I push a button? <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, was there anything in your car that was irretrievably lost? No, but after initially after it happened, when I was sort of in a daze, mm-hmm. I realized my my Sixers hat that I was wearing oh, had brother. flown off. Right, was on the floor, and it took me like two minutes to realize that I couldn't see because my glasses had also flown off. Oh, I didn't remember that whether I had contacts or glasses on, so I I had called my wife Jennifer. And oh. she's talking to me and be like, uh, you know, are you okay? Make sure. That I was like, I can't find, I gotta find my glass. I gotta go. I can't find my glasses. And I, and then I, like, that was the most important thing in the world in that moment. Yeah. Was being able to see again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's, added nothing. It's crazy. Well, a car accident like that is not, I was in one where I, I had never been in an accident like that before. Mm-hmm. And I remember just the, the feeling of stillness after it happened. Mm. And I realized I have to get out of this thing. And it was... <laughs> It felt so slow to to every movement, like, okay, then you reach over here and you pull that lever mm-hmm. and then you push. <laughs> it was so, it, like, time froze. It was so crazy. And you, you don't know whether the, the car door will open sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah. I remember thinking, well, this is where I live now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm prepared to live in this <laughs> messed up uh, old husk of a car. <laughs> you ever see the man who lives in the wrecked out car? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even sweep the glass up. <laughs> well, Hal, I hope that uh, I hope that you will be okay. I hope that you're feeling okay now. Are you in pain right now? Uh, I'm in, uh, I'll say soreness and discomfort, hmm. but mm-hmm. I'm happy to be here with all of you. That That alleviates it. Gross. I mean, come on. Friendship. This is friendship. 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 Yeah. Friendship. friendship. Gross. Hal, I'm going to turn away from you, but you'll be in my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look right next to me. Annie Savage is back. We indeed. Annie, how are you doing? Hey, I'm okay. I didn't what? get in a car accident. Then do you want to- I, I didn't eat any soap. <laughs> Show and off. I don't remember the last time I had entrails spilled on me from above, so I think I'm good. How about monkeys? Love monkeys. Have you ever worked with one? Uh, not worked with, but played with. 
Where did you play with this monkey? At like, Universal Studios Hollywood, the really? entertainment capital of LA. <laughs> <laughs> now, was this was this part of your job, or there just no. was they were offering? Hey, they you can were, play with the monkey um, if you want. Yeah, well, they they used to there used to be a trainer that actually owned the monkey. The monkey was theirs. They weren't part of the show. Right. But if you like, we knew people that sort of worked with those animal actor mm-hmm. stage mm-hmm. show people and uh, they said we can get you a meet and greet with the monkey a meet and greet with the <laughs> monkey yeah and then I had a monkey of my own and it's you mean your child pretty much the same oh yeah, yeah. well six of one. <laughs> I, Annie I can't tell you how excited I was to find out that you had owned a monkey at some point <laughs> <laughs> I wish um, you've never been in a car accident I wouldn't say never. Um, I've been in... I thought that's what you said. No, I'm saying I haven't. That's why I'm okay now. (laughs) I'm just trying to make everybody else's pain (laughs) better for me. Uh, I've been in like a little fender bender or two here and there, but nothing... Man, knock on wood. That was me knocking on wood, guys. Nobody's entering the room. (laughs) What's going on? (laughs) Now, you have a friend here with you. I brought a friend today. Yeah. This is she was here the last time last year, we recorded yeah, for Christmas. Yep. Millie Savage Cross is here. Millie, hi. Do you want to say hello on the microphone? Right here. Poopy. Millie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Millie. Oh, and I've been holding back, and I've been holding back. <laughs> We're going to lose our license. <laughs> We're going to have to edit that out. I can't believe... Millie. That is... I'm taking one of your chicken nuggets for that. No. Yeah. Uh, 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 right. oh. That's the penalty. I'm going to do dipping sauce. <laughs> Millie, you've drawn several pieces of artwork for everyone. Do you like to draw? Poopy head. No, no, no Millie. We're done with Millie. Millie. I never expect this is. I'm astonished. You see how she elevated the joke? It went from poopy to poopy That's head. Right. So we're it's getting true. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rule of three, Millie. What else do you have to say? Poopy head. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, Paul, I should tell you that uh, that was completely premeditated because moments before she walked over to Annie and Annie's microphone, she, Millie looked at me and said, I'm going to say poopy. <laughs> <laughs> now, why wouldn't you want it? There wasn't time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Millie, thanks for coming on here with your... Poopy. Millie! <laughs> Cut her mic! Cut her mic! <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, I'm turning away from you. Poopy. <laughs> Millie? <laughs> oh we have only ourselves to blame. It's true. I'm going to look directly across from me. Little Janet Varney is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> she went NPR with it. I'm, I'm trying to bring it. I'm trying to bring us back from the Thank you. abyss that we... <laughs> fell into we cascaded into I feel like that abyss is still gazing back at us <laughs> <laughs> well Janet you have your choice of topics mm. <laughs> monkeys you've worked this with this is why going last is the most fun you said really you'd worked with Crystal the monkey I did work with Crystal the monkey <laughs> was that on Stand Against Evil no it was for you know it was one, it was one of those things where uh, as soon as I acknowledged silently, yet in a very attention-seeking type way, <laughs> that I had worked with Crystal moments ago, the next thing that flashed in my mind was like, why was she there? <laughs> like, because because it, it was for, it was a sketch show pilot. So already you have all the sketches in there and they're right. all jumbled together because you're shooting, probably shooting out of order. Yes. And so on, and then... I don't remember. I feel like the gag was that she was in a refrigerator, oh. like not like. And Sean Hayes was, in, and he opened the refrigerator, and there was a monkey in there. Like that was the punchline. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not where monkeys are. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. No, I guess you're right. Yeah, I yeah. guess I'm surprised that show didn't get picked up. Now that I, <laughs> when you put it into a more clever adult context like that. <laughs> But I, I was very excited to work with. I didn't mean, listen, 
She could have been any monkey. I didn't care if she was Crystal. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, th- I don't get an was, attitude about it, Crystal. This was maybe before she became <laughs> yeah. Capital C, Crystal the monkey. Yeah. Who, yeah. Guys. Yeah. Who's Crystal the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, you, you've seen Crystal. If you've seen a monkey on TV, okay. chances are you've seen Crystal. You right. know, she's a little weeper capuchin monkey, so probably. A little what kind of capuchin? A weeper capuchin. Weeper? Yeah. Like crying weeper? I think so. I mean, I don't I've know why. I've never heard that I before. There's a capuchin, and then there's a weeper capuchin. There's something different about the weeper capuchin, but I can't. I'm not sure what it is. Why isn't it crying capuchin? I don't know. It's so much better. <laughs> I don't know. She's very. She was very cute. Pretty cute monkey. She did, and she was not on a leash. Not in a diaper. Not in a diaper. Just and let it all hang out. <laughs> <laughs> women's lip, women's lip. She, she burnt her diaper. <laughs> <laughs> we all supported it. Uh, she, they, that uh, she, they wouldn't let her. I mean, you know, she was she was very attached to her trainer. Yeah. But they said if she just kind of be near her, and if she likes you, you'll know. And sure enough, I was standing next to her, and she reached over and gently took my hand, and then started cleaning under my nails oh. with her with her with her own fingers, right. and then with her t- little mouth. She was like, and there she was. Oh, she's grooming you. She does like you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the most kind. Be honest, that is the most accepted I have felt in show business. <laughs> <laughs> Felt so wanted. <laughs> oh, Crystal. I would be worried if, a, I mean, first, of course, I'd be flattered if a monkey yeah. was grooming me. But then if it was picking something off of me and putting it in its mouth, I'd be like, what what's on me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what microscopic? <laughs> Listen, we all know we have microscopic bugs on us at all times. I we all try to forget that that's, that's true. That's right. But they're living we'll in your eyebrows. It's not real. That's yeah. right. Yes. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. With t- teamwork saves yeah. the day. <laughs> If those guys weren't there, you would know it. (laughs) Folks, we have to take a break. During the break, you will listen to the ad. When we return, I'll ask the question of our panel. Stay alive, no matter what occurs. I will find you. Podswag offers merch from all your favorite podcasts like Comedy Bang Bang, How Did This Get Made, and of course, Spontaneous Nation. They've got shirts, hoodies, pins, posters, mugs, stickers, even gift cards, and so much more to choose from. Shop the full Spontaneous Nation collection at podswag.com slash PFT and use the code SPONT for 40% off your purchase until December 31st. That's podswag.com slash PFT, code SPONT. <laughs> Welcome back to Spontanea Nation. Ooh, I wow. surprised you. Oh, hot reentry. F- <laughs> <laughs> I love an HR. All right. Here's the question posed to us by our previous episode's guest. And this is the most, <laughs> one of the most direct and benign questions we've ever gotten. <laughs> what is your favorite vacation destination? Uh-huh. All right. Craig? <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really make a meal out of this. <laughs> My family has a lake house. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Hard me on a hill. In uh, Kenny Bunkport. Oh, really? No. Uh, <laughs> I am a Kennedy. <laughs> uh, in uh, North Carolina, and then my parents uh, tore down that house uh, and have rebuilt. In a rage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and have rebuilt a new house, and I just visited them for the. F- I-, I haven't been there in 15 years, mm-hmm. actually, and so I had to see family and everything that I had uh, been neglecting. <laughs> All these, right. My sisters go every year. Uh, wow. But it, it reminded me of how nice and peaceful it is to just sit. And look at water. Yeah. The it's mm-hmm. the best. It's honestly the best. Uh, why do you not go every year? Because it's all the way in North Carolina, and it's you know it's uh, it's a pain. Uh, <laughs> dude, uh, keep in mind I, the question is what is your favorite? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I love this uh, place that I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I, I really should have gone more often. Mm-hmm. But usually when I travel, I travel to do shows. I try to to time uh, the vacation along with a gig. Yes, yes. So yes. the vacation pays for itself. I know? I end up doing that a lot too, but I 
I find that when you don't do that and you just take a pure vacation, you realize what a vacation is supposed to be. Yes. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, you're not supposed to be thinking about another thing or whatever. Um, but this, so is the house modernized? Is it? It is, yeah. And, uh, and, the area, which was this very kind of rural area in North Carolina that was very isolated, is now like this hipster uh, mm. destination, and there's all these like craft breweries. Is it there. Asheville? It's not Asheville, but it's uh, it's kind of uh, in the Charlotte area. Okay, it's all a right. suburb of Charlotte, but kind of like way out there. But it's like where the NASCAR drivers live, <laughs> where they live <laughs> <laughs> on Lake Norman. Lake Norman. Mm-hmm. But you love those micro brews, right? Because you're a beer guy. Hell yeah. <laughs> and my sisters had been earlier this year and had a very stressful time dealing with my parents who are, you know, who are older and can be cranky. And uh, my mother's very protective of the house and, like, doesn't want anybody, like, setting a beer down without a coaster Ooh. or anything or, or touching the furniture. Do they live there in- full time? Well, that's another contentious thing, which is like they should have moved full time to this house by now, but all their crap is at the house that I grew up in in Virginia. Right. And they're, they're not even close to getting rid of all that stuff. My mother is sentimentally holding on to anything that any of the kids oh. touched at any point. And all of us have said, oh. We're, we have everything we need. Please don't hold on to it. Throw right. it away. Right, right, right. Donate it. You don't need any of it. When uh, I first took Carla. Uh, to my house, my bedroom was preserved like it was 1987. No. And, <laughs> and that no one had set foot in there since. So there was like a U2 poster and, you know, and like any, you know, trophies I had won and stuff like that. And I mean, that's really just a museum because it's like, <laughs> yes. You and Carl are going to sleep in that, no doubt, single bed, right? <laughs> bunk, bunk bed? <laughs> no. No, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> bunk bed with uh, like safari sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps containing an image of Crystal the monkey. <laughs> Gags, what do you think? Yeah. Favorite vacation destination? No, <laughs> I, I don't understand the question. Just to answer uh, the Epcot Center. Is it really? Absolutely, 100%. The experimental like, prototype community, community of, of tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Because the front is half that of it. what it stands yeah. for? I never knew. <laughs> experimental <laughs> prototype community of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I never knew that they were proposing that this is how it could be. Yeah. It's a dome city. It is, it is utopia. Don't, a utopia. Yeah. Don't you wish yeah. it had been the original actual Epcot, which was a dome city? Yeah, that it was, was, that was what dome, it was going like to Logan's be. Logan's run. This was, yeah. this was the, the compromise version that we got. But you have the front half of it, the southern half of this. It's all around the Seven Seas Lagoon. The, the, <laughs> okay. The, which, which, looking at water, beautiful. Sure. The bottom sure. half of it is... Oh, yeah, any body of water. Yeah. A puddle. Sure. <laughs> uh, the bottom half is... Uh, is what is pavilions of what 1982 thought the future looked like. Right. And then the top half of it is, uh, is so if it was a clock from like nine to three is uh, pavilions of different countries from around the world. And you can visit uh, an English pub for lunch. You can uh, go have a lovely French dinner, watch some Chinese acrobats. My father-in-law famously, um, when he was a, a young divorced dad, <laughs> sure, uh, had the kids for the weekend, took mm-hmm. them to Epcot and um, decided he was going to have a beer from every country. I've done that. <laughs> and then he had to go lay down in the hotel. It's, <laughs> here, it's it's difficult. Uh, yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to do that. Yeah. If you're going to do it, go with a buddy and he, split yeah. a beer. Let's country. say there are only seven countries in the world. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah there but are, you said you have done this? You've I gone have, around the world this. at Epcot? I've gone around in the world. One, in one day? In one day, yeah. Um, How many beers is that? That is nine beers <laughs> in a day. Um... And what, what we should have done was... Uh, not do that? Was, was not do that. <laughs> or or not, make, not make a dinner reservation for the end of it, because by the time we got to the dinner reservation, we were so drunk and full. Yeah. Uh, and our dinner reservation was for a buffet <laughs> that we spent a lot of money to get the buffet, ate one bowl of soup each, and went, well, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. But you have you so you've been multiple times. Oh yeah, yeah. dozens. And you'll and you'll go more. I will. I was there uh, two months ago. I've never been. It's wonderful. 
point yeah. of information. Yeah. What's the golf ball? What's the sphere? Spaceship Earth. All right. Sorry, yeah. I asked. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, the, it's the history of communication told through animatronic tableaus. But it goes, <laughs> is that also an acronym? Yeah. yeah it does sound- but only up to 1982, right? But only up to, oh, no, they added one at the they end. They added Wi-Fi? They added, uh, they added a little uh, tableau of Steve Jobs in his garage at the end of the ride. <laughs> so not even... <laughs> yeah. There's not even, like, a Motorola Razor in there. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And Judy Dench does the narration for it. Does she really? Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> you guys, you can watch the whole ride on YouTube. And then came Atari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson. Hello. Favorite destination spot. You know, I would have said uh, in the past. Destination pa- I, spot. <laughs> destination spot. Yeah. I um I I like locations. Mm-hmm. Um uh I would have said before uh Camden, Maine, the Penobscot Bay of Maine, because I too like looking at water and sailing on boats and mm-hmm. things. Um but sort of like Craig's North Carolina ish, it's uh it's awfully far. It yeah. takes, you know, like a, an entire day to get there. So mm-hmm. It's difficult, but uh, I've discovered something similar off the coast of Seattle, an island called Vashon Island, which is, um, you have to take a ferry to get there, and it's uh, it's just far enough from civilization that it can feel a little bit remote, and mm-hmm. there are, there's a, a resident pod of orcas there in the south of the Puget Sound, and it's pretty gorgeous. So my wife and I go there sometimes, and we'll Airbnb for a long weekend or a week and just hang out and do stuff. How close have you been to these orcas? Uh, myself, not very. Um, the, You've the, seen them, though? Uh, no. The uh, <laughs> it's a very, There's a very troubling past. I feel like all I'm telling her stories about animals and capture. Uh, orcas have long memories, and yes. in Quartermaster Harbor, which is often where we find ourselves uh, renting and staying, um, famously some of the well-known orcas uh, were taken, 30, 40 years ago, were taken from that, uh, that area were trapped within Quartermaster Harbor and then, you know, uh, taken captive. And there are still... For like, like SeaWorld or something? SeaWorld or? and that yeah. sort of thing. I don't know if Tilikum was one of them, but uh, right. it's possible. And uh, there are whales from that time still alive, so mm-hmm. that whenever they get to that tip of the southern tip of Vashon Island, the whales get very wary. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So have you seen them turn away? I, uh, yes, <laughs> as I approach. <laughs> What are you a fisherman? Do you I like to fish? I do, yeah. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? Um, I think the biggest fish I've ever caught uh, probably shouldn't count because it was you know sort of deep sea fishing kind of thing. But the biggest fish I've ever caught freshwater. My uh, my family has a cottage on a lake in Canada, northeast of Toronto, and I've ca- got all these lakes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cottage. This is a uh, this oh, is pretty spartan. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, I mean it's pretty spartan. It's not. Uh, it's got you know. There's a big like uh, pit in the middle. Running water. <laughs> I caught a 40-inch muscalunge, which is a bit like a, a, what? a northern pike. Uh, Did Jethro Tull song? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of this fish. Sure. It's, a, it's a, a very long torpedo-like fish, kind of a freshwater barracuda-shaped fish. Wow, muscalunge? Muscalunge. Or musky, people musky. call them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, fish that Wisconsin, guys. <laughs> it's yeah. What? Is that true? Yes. What's that? Why do you do know all that? Do all states have state fish fishes? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yes, they wow. do. States have everything. They they have official. They Trees, have official. Birds, they've named everything. Flowers. Yes, yeah. dinosaurs. <laughs> states have official dinosaurs. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 I gotta get into this. You gotta get into this. Game. <laughs> you gotta get. Into this. <laughs> Wait. Why do you know that? I write and produce trivia for a living right now. Oh, that's right. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that sounds like a curse. <laughs> That's all I remember after the accident is the state fish. (laughs) Well, let's see if you remember your favorite destination, vacation location. (laughs) I do. It's it's Kauai. Oh, now you're talking my language, brother. Yes. Uh, Jennifer and I went there for our 10-year anniversary last year. The Garden Isle of Hawaii. Beautiful. Yes. Just developed enough that there are things to do if you're feeling touristy. Yes. But also plenty of space to just wander or do nothing and be yes. comfortable and happy. And a ton of different um, ecosystems. Yes, So you've got rainforest, desert, all, all within an hour's drive. It's very green. It's yes. It's very relaxing. We went there for our honeymoon. That was, mm. that was when I realized I'd never taken a vacation before. Right. 
That was the fr- it hit me like a, a couple days in, like, oh yeah, <laughs> this is what you're supposed to do. Did you experience a sensation where you relaxed and your jaw unclenched for what felt like the first time in <laughs> decades? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a that is a wonderful feeling. Yeah, absolutely. It was really something. I remember um, what we we decided we were just going to eat when we were hungry and sleep when we were tired. And one night we we took like we were going to take a nap at three, and then you know when we woke up go to dinner, and we woke up at nine a.m. the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Island time. It was great. Yeah, it was great. When, so was that the. Was that the first time? The first time you went was for your anniversary. That, to that island, we'd gone to right. Maui for our honeymoon, and I had gone to Oahu and the Big Island when I was a kid with my parents. So many Hawaii so I, yeah, trips. I'd been all around, and and that is my favorite island, just for that reason of how remote it feels. Absolutely. Do you what when you were a kid going there? That's because from that's a very it's a very big trip yes. from the East Coast. Yes. To go there, I was ten. Did you enjoy it as a kid? I, I thought it was nice, but I was more concerned with finding the arcade in the hotel. <laughs> if I could have found yeah, yeah, that arcade yeah. and gotten into it, yeah. they wouldn't have needed. I didn't need to go to the Dole Plantation or see Diamond the Head. The Dole Plantation. And yeah. I spent my time on the Big Island uh, playing in the pool with the children of Major League Baseball players who were there for a golf tournament. <laughs> And, uh, and I was a huge baseball fan as a kid. Sure. So I, one of the great lies that I've ever told in my life was going up to Steve Garvey and telling him I was a fan so I could get his autograph. <laughs> Did not care for Steve Garvey yeah. at all. Did you actively know. dislike him as, as a Dodger? A little bit. Well, he's kind of <laughs> like, he's like one of those guys who kind of trolled around a little bit and had a lot of kids uh, out of his wedlock. That's kind of- Is that true? I didn't know Garvey. that. Famous ladies man. Wow. Really? Yeah. And That's you knew why, that as a kid? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. I went to a very progressive Quaker school in suburban Philadelphia. Oh. classes. If it isn't Steve Garvey, the known coxman. <laughs> <laughs> May I have your autograph, sir? <laughs> I don't care for your way of life. <laughs> Get any stank on your hang down recently, Steve? <laughs> Turn a double play last night? Oh. Thank God for his separate headphones. <laughs> I The first time I had ever gone to Kauai was to do uh, behind-the-scenes uh, interviews for the movie Tropic Thunder. Mm. Oh. And that is where I met a water buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? It was crazy. They're weird... Water buffaloes look like another animal in a costume. I need to hear it. Where do you like to go? I hate this question. I Why do you say. hate it? Because it's I don't I don't have one. <laughs> so sad. Oh yes, it's mysterious. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I had one thirty-five years ago. <laughs> On this very day. <laughs> I said thirty-five years. That's a joke Millie loves to do. That's her favorite, aside from Boomy. <laughs> anyway, wait, 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 what is the joke? Oh, it's just like, we'll say anything, anything, or um. I don't know what like, the joke. Like a ghost story. Yeah, thing, like, like 35 years but ago. But it's turned into just an answer to a question where we'd be like, oh, did you, when did you get that shirt? 35 years ago. Or like, <laughs> she's like oh, I've had it. It's, it's, it's a sol- it. solid joke. It's solid her joke. favorite joke. And she's good at it. Sorry, she led with poopy. Did you, t- <laughs> <laughs> did you take vacations as a kid? We did. And that's another thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, we... Uh, so I had, I'm the youngest of four, and they're all, I'm two years from my brother, and they're all two years from each other. So I mean, one year from each other. So we're very, very close yeah. in age, and I don't know how my parents did it. But as such, um, uh, it was hard to wrangle all of sure. all four of us, mm-hmm. and we were very good at supporting each other and not <laughs> listening to mom and dad. Oh. So there's a lot of, of the... The, for some reason, you know, the bad memories stick or like the bad times and the yelling and the all the, you know, and all yeah, that of stuff. But we had fun, you know, we, we did go to Epcot. I don't remember much except it rained a lot and it was warm. And there were these little tadpoles everywhere. I thought I was going to step on them. But oh, there was on this, the ground? Yeah, they were everywhere. Oh. Like, whatever the tiny version is. I don't know. Tadpoles pretty small. Tadpoles, yeah. yeah sure. right? They're jumping. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. So anyway, there's a, 
There was um, this. There's this place in Bend, Oregon. Mm-hmm. We lived in Portland. So ev- for a couple of summers there, we would go down and rent um, a, a cabin at this lodge area called Inn of the Seventh Mountain. Mm-hmm. And they had years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and they had all these really cool. You know, it's it's in the, it's a mountain town, so they they had horseback riding and this and that. And like you could play tennis one day and then go do just whatever. It was this whole area, and uh, I do remember this one time we went horseback riding, and we went on like the forty five minute horseback mm-hmm. trail, and there was the uh, ninety minute group left after us, and when we we left, and we got rained on. And my mom, I was pretty young. I was uh, maybe eight or younger. Uh, I, my mom and I were on the same horse, and our saddle kept kind of sliding a little bit at a time. Uh huh. My sister was on the only pony that they had, and it eventually it laid down at one point on her, <laughs> on her leg. <laughs> like it just like kind of laid down. It was tired. And then um, <gasps> while it was raining on us, uh, my brother, who was, if I was eight, he would have been 10, by himself on a horse, they gave him the rowdy horse for some reason. It was the only horse that came with its own whip. Because <laughs> it was rowdy. I was like, why would you put a 10-year-old on this by himself? Um, okay, then then our saddle just went. Like, my mom and I were, like, <laughs> all the way to the side, just hanging <laughs> off. So, and this is all while it's raining. All this stuff kept happening. And then finally, so that our head guide had to sit on the horse with my brother, which is awkward yeah. for a kid, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, get that horse. Instead of putting him on his horse... <laughs> <laughs> so then, so there's this whole thing. Eventually, my sister, we get the pony up, and my sister's leg is fine, and we get like we get safely back to the stables. <laughs> this is because we get safely back to the stables. The 90 minute group had already come back. <laughs> the, <laughs> they they our 45 minute trek yeah. took longer than the 90 minute. <laughs> Because I hope they didn't charge you double. I don't worry about that. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to not be doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this, and that's what, like, I have memories of that, of family vacation. Like, oh, well, remember when the thing went all wrong? <laughs> so bad. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess. Big well, as a, as a parent, I'm going to be making... The same sort of memories for my child. Well, all right, you're already ahead of the game by not having four children. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> LJV. Yes. Where's the place to be? Uh, the place that is sticking out of my mind. It, it, it's not a regular place I've gone. Uh, I guess many of us have said that. So, uh, but it's a, certainly one of the most recent. Mm. Uh, is Copenhagen. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Had you been there before? I only been there once before. Okay. But I loved it so much the first time that I made it a goal to go back. Like I had the great honor of uh, attending the London Podcast Festival mm-hmm. with a certain Paul F. Tompkins, and um, we went to uh, Copenhagen afterwards, and uh, and and Paris as well. But Copenhagen is just the the size of it is wonderful. Um, there's no advertisement anywhere. Wow. Uh, all they have, they've banned, like there's no billboards, there's no bus stops That's with ads. That's very intriguing. And so, and, and really just like along one part of the river and then on one big building, there are just like logos. Yeah. Which is starkly stands out. Like yeah. you notice it, you're like, oh my God, what is that? And then you realize like, oh, I'm, I'm, I've gotten used to not seeing advertising. Wow. So this is shocking to me that I'm seeing seven large company logos but no still no advertising That's or anything wild and it, i i think that has a lot to do with why it's so calm and like yeah. just wonderful to walk around and everyone bicycles everywhere and, and of course you love chewing tobacco i love <laughs> chewing tobacco. i was i was at live for chewing tobacco um yeah it's just a wonderful place the food is wonderful the people are very friendly. But you had been there once before. I'd been there only once before. And what was the what were the circumstances of that? Just vacation. Oh, okay. Yeah, just a vacation. Wow. What what made you choose that in the first place? Um. Well, for me <clears throat> personally, my 
dad's, like, uh, sort of our family's best friends um, for me growing up uh, were Danish. So <laughs> I really grew up going over to their house, and I think I inherited a lot of their taste. Like, mm-hmm. I love every, uh, Danish furniture, like, all of that, because I love their house seemed like, I mean, we sort of get into that, what is that word? <laughs> Hugo? <laughs> Oh, yes, like big, yes, yes, yes. It's like everything's it, it very H-U-G-G-E, well designed. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything feels like just well designed yeah. and lovely and friendly. Got a little sense of humor to it. Like there's just, it's very, it's just, it's that, that's very much my aesthetic. And I think it has something to do with like just loving going over to the Christensen's house and all of their like, little cute Danish flags. Those little slinkies that they have for a Christmas year I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. I, see, this is the thing where they sell them everywhere in Copenhagen. They're just little. It's like imagine a slinky with two little feet on the bottom and it. a little little half dome on the top <laughs> with little eyes and like a Santa hat. And for some reason, <laughs> that's like, oh, you gotta get one of those. Classic Denmark. And so you so you just you pick it up by the Santa head. I don't think you do anything with it. Maybe you tap at it. And it's really good. Oh, it, okay. It wiggles a little bit. So it's it's a slinky, but it's somewhat. It's, it's like a the original stiff, bobblehead. It's a somewhat stiff of. coil. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not like. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to yeah, pull yeah, yeah. on slink. It's just, <laughs> it's a small <laughs> coil and it just wiggles. Did you ever think about what a sensual name slinky is for a children's toy? It is very sensual. <laughs> I hadn't. I hadn't. It really so is. <laughs> All right, folks, we have to take a break. During the break, we will procure a location. I have, I'm, I'm going to reach out to someone to get a location. Someone not on site. Ooh, ooh. And then when we return, we'll reveal the location, and we're going to do our improv. All this and nothing else when Spontane Nation returns. We went to Welcome back to Spontane Nation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hot re-entry. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my friends. We have received a location for our improv. We have reached out to via text message our regular work juice improv accompanist, Jonathan Dinerstein. Jonathan Dinerstein was kind enough to text us back with a location, and we're about to reveal the location. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out Something that happened in the past. Anytime we need to travel in the past, someone's saying my memory, we're learning how something came to be. Anytime we go into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. (laughs) That was uh, surprisingly loud in the headphones. (laughs) I understand it is being worked on as we speak. (laughs) Let's say we want to return from the flashback back to where we were, or anytime we need to go into the future. Anytime we move forward in time, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final button moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. Anytime we move laterally in time, we use this meanwhile sound effect. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. And now, my friends, it is time to reveal the location for improv provided to us by our recommendation, Jonathan Dinerstein, and that location is... So the red one. In the organist room at a baseball stadium. Oh! In the organist room at a baseball stadium. That is some synchronicity right there. It is a wonder that we're still friends, folks. Sydney, we take you now to inside the organist room at a baseball stadium. Uh, she sounds good. She sounds real good. Well, she better. We, we've been uh, repolishing all the keys and everything and getting her up to speed. I yeah. mean, she's an old lady. I just want to make sure that she's uh, ready to go for when the season starts in April. Well, she'll be ready, Clem. Thank you, Tommy. I know she let us down last year during the playoffs. Well, I don't, I don't look at it that way. I, you know, it's not the, not the organ's fault, you know. It's Always the organist. Always the organist. What? Uh, oh, nothing, Doris. <laughs> nothing. You know, you didn't have to, you didn't have to be there for, for this. You... I, I've been playing this organ for 
nigh on 72 years. I know. That's right. <laughs> What? That's right. You were a child. You were a baseball I organ was... child prodigy. Do you remember? So your name is Doris, is that right? Yes, sir. Oh. Let's see here piano lessons. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. A little bit of organ. Oh, yes. I'm very much interested in the organ. I see all this experience you have here at church. Oh, yes. Every Sunday. And you played Little League. Yeah, uh-huh. And you read music by sight. That's right. And you have a very good ear. All true. This is a comprehensive resume. <laughs> That's right, Doris, and we're very happy to have you. Wouldn't be the same without you, but surely you must have had family to see. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> uh, Doris, you you got to get out of here every now and then. And, and Clem, I, I apologize that you have to put up with her, even though we replaced her with you 20 years ago. No, what? it's fine, it's fine. I... I... She kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have the heart to, to tell her to leave. It's it's fine. She's you know she's helpful sometimes too. You know when I'm not sure. In the what same to play. way that a broken clock is right twice a day. Exactly that way. Yes. Mom, Dad, is, yep. is Grandma going to come to Christmas dinner, or is is she still where I think she is? Oh, honey. Grandma loves you very much. Yeah, but yeah, she but loves I... something else more. Mm -hmm. That stupid organ at the stadium? Well, no, I was going to say she loves us more. But oh, yeah, definitely. She oh. also loves the organ. We've more. seen God, the list. There's so many things she loves more than you. Yeah, heart she candy's one. Oh, for sure. she loves heart loves candy. Her candy. Wait, she made a list? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, what was that one fish that's the uh, size oh, the musky. of a torpedo? The yes, musky. The mu she loves that's like the torpedo the musky, of the water. Honey. That's what they call that. She hey, loves Jason. that musky. Hey, Jason. Don't worry about these assholes. We got each other. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, invisible friend. <laughs> Don't mention it. Keto, who are you talking to? Nobody. Nobody at all. Hey, hey, invisible Dave. Yeah. Do you, do you really think that Grandma hates me as much as as she says she does and writes that she does? <laughs> yeah, man, she's pretty plain about it. <sighs> she loves Invisible Dave. Wait, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, what is my grandson's name again? We, we, Jason. Yeah, Jason. Jason. And his friend's name is Invisible Dave. Invisible, oh, that Invisible Dave. <laughs> what a looker. Now, you, yeah, you said you like him more than you like your grandson, even though you've never seen him. Well, maybe that's why I like him. Oh, Do you oh. have grandchildren? Oh, not anymore. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Dear God! They had themselves legally emancipated from me. Uh, I don't this understand. Is, what this is, uh, I mean, we didn't want to, but it's like... What like, choice did we have, Grandpa? Yeah, it's like, what, like you're like old. Oh, I know, yeah, but so I, embarrassing. Well, yeah. I don't mean to be. How can I be less embarrassing? I don't know, maybe by us being emancipated? But it, you don't want to be emancipated from your parents. Just from me? That's right. Yeah. I mean, right? Can't, we can't be the first kids in the world to have done that. Right. I mean, look. I hope so. We're pretty mature. We're 17 and a half and 19. And we're making these decisions on our own. And do you know how embarrassing it is when we're at school and we open up a card that you sent to us for our birthday that for some reason we took with us to school and we opened it at school and, and, and there's like, a well, dollar in there? Like, a dollar? Right. Is that not good? No. Oh, uh, it's so dollar. shameful, What's a good man? amount? Uh, like a thousand? Yeah. Ooh, what? <laughs> yeah, like a thousand dollars. Our other grandparents probably give us a thousand. Probably. Probably. What do you mean? Give probably. Us, I mean, it's possible. They could. Is that happening yeah, or they not? They would. What? Is Look, that happening? Or oh, not? you got a lot of questions, old man. You know what? I think I'm on board with this. Well, yeah. my heart, my heart goes out to you both. Uh, being an organist, it is a it is a tough life. Thank you, Thomas. And it, it can be it, a sheltered it, life. It can be. I mean, you're literally sheltered from everyone else. <laughs> no one knows where you are in the stadium. You're just making these noises and, you know, hopefully adding to the experience, getting people excited for the game. If there's any way, Clem and Doris, I know that you're, you're going to consult on this as well. Uh, the uh, management uh, really wants to update some of the tunes this year. Uh, oh, so how they, so? They do have a request of uh, some of the numbers that uh, if you could work it into your regular routine. Uh, okay. They wanna... I mean, we got a pretty 
standard We've set of songs. We've been that we doing play. those for seventy-two years. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of music written in that time. Well, I mean, obviously, you're not going to replace "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." Oh That's no, no, oh yeah. that, absolutely. Uh, the management would love to hear "Crazy Train" by Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> well, what's oh. that? Well, it's it's a it's a heavy metal classic with a, uh, a memorable solo a train played by the song? late Randy Rhodes. Well, we've Look already... at the train! It's crazy. Play ball. Okay, you. All right, Doris. Okay, you won't right. get All to right. sing, Hello? Doris. You, well, you already, never have. It's all I've ever. We, we've already got Chattanooga Choo Choo. <laughs> uh, we have we have our train songs fulfilled. And then well, right through here, Mr. and Mrs. Richington, uh, this is what we'll clear out and put in uh, luxury suites. Mm. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes. I love the idea of people paying for things. Yes. <laughs> well, well, we're very rich. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What's going on here? Oh, I'm just... Oh, it's Christmas Eve. I didn't think anybody would be here. I'm just bringing the team owners through to show them what we're going to clear out once we replace all of this with a uh, single electronic box. What? Yeah, just... Well, Thomas, did you know about this? Well, I, I, I'd sat in on the meetings where this was discussed, but Guy, come on. We, we we hadn't finalized it. Uh, but Doris and Clem here, the, and 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 the old lady, our organ. Oh, Doris, the, is, Doris is napping. Let's keep our voices down. <laughs> <laughs> They're the heart and soul of this stadium. Yeah, I mean, I you know. I'm Look, the my heart name is Guy. I went ahead and I just I just went with it. Guy, you told us that the suite was going to be cleaned out by the 24th. That's true, Mr. Richington, and uh, I would remind you that elsewhere on the planet, it still remains the 23rd. Fair point. Good job. Time zone, sweetheart. Well yes. said. Well <laughs> said. Yes. What a slippery fellow you are. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's just, what do you know? <laughs> Wait, what do I know, or that's just, just what I know? Oh, I just wondered if you had any specific empirical data about my slipperiness. Well, I just watched what Oh, happened. okay. Oh, that's fine. Yes. Well, I can accept that. Just nothing from other teams I've worked well, for. I don't know why you challenged it. Oh, it I just, I it maybe just happened. I made a comment on it. When you live your life the way I do, you are always looking over your shoulder. Oh, is that so? Yeah. I wouldn't know about that. No, you wouldn't. I well, bet there's a story you could tell me. Sure. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, I look under the Shells and under one of the shells will be a P. Is that what you think is going to happen? <laughs> I thought that's what you. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. All but right. so, mm-hmm. to make it interesting, right? Um, like put down a thousand dollars, a thousand, or like a dollar, or, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> Full disclosure: there's, there is no P. <laughs> so you got better at it as you went along. I mean, it's I've been at it a little while. My name didn't start as Guy. I mean. <laughs> Anyway, Mr. If you'll excuse us, Guy, we're trying to prepare for the upcoming season and get our playlist together per your request of management. So if you want to continue with your tour, we would appreciate the time to work. All right. Over here is where we're going to put the chafing. Excuse me. Uh, Thomas, is it? Yes? I don't quite see the point in putting together a playlist. We have our son coming in with his iPhone. He's just going to plug it in and play songs off of That's it. That's what I was referring to. That's, I couldn't think of it. Yeah, yes. iPhone, iPhone. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's called the music box of your pocket. I'm, I'm in marketing. Sir? Uh, mm-hmm. Sir? Yes? I'm going to apologize for this, but I'm not going to hold back. You're a poopy head. Oh, oh. Thomas. Oh. Whoa. Poopy, you are Guy? full of poopy. Well, Guy? And uh, what is Thomas. happening Thomas, here? You are, you are out of line. You take that poop right out of here. You know what, Thomas? You are out of here. I'm out of here? You're out of here. Well, poop you, sir. Yeah. Oh, well, Whoa. I Poop have. you in your poopy face. I, mean, I was going to say I've never. I've, had, I've actually been said that a lot, too. Uh, but Crying capuchins. Holy cow. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Richington, I, I am sorry. I, uh, I haven't been talked to that, to that way in... I mean, hours. I'm starting to feel we shouldn't have spent our Christmas Eve looking at a place we're going to be turning into something else at the expense of many other people, darling. You know what, sweetheart? You're right. We should have just come back when it was a Walmart. Uh, Mr. What? Wait a minute. So you're replacing the organ with an iPhone, but then also you're going to make this a Walmart? It's a three-step process. Yes. Yeah, uh... Uh, look, it's we're just penciling out right now, but the Loge level will become a big box store. <laughs> yes. Have you ever heard of dollars on top of dollars? Of course not. You're probably poor. Well, I... You can't make money unless you're really making money. And that's the point of business, right, sweetheart? That's right. Your money has to be working for you at all times. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mr. Mrs. Richington, is it? Appropriately, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, look, I... 
I don't know what to say other than, I, I, is there any way you won't do this? This baseball stadium means a lot to people. The organ means a lot to people. It's, it's part of the fabric of the game, after all. I mean, if you could come up with the $10 million that we're going to make off of this big box store we're going to turn the loge level into, challenge, I suppose you could keep your... <laughs> challenge accepted. What? So it's $10 million you need, is it? Uh, yes. You realize that if we don't see this $10 million within a very short amount of time, uh, we start taking fingers. What do you consider a short amount of time? 45 minutes. <laughs> That's. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding with you. I'm oh. kidding with you. He's kidding with relief. you. He is kidding with what you. What a relief. Uh, what you, a relief. you see how he fell for that one? You, you made a joke. He didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it. It was a joke. <laughs> but in all serious, mm. thank you. Yeah. Is the guy who's going to be taking your fingers and toes. I'm yeah. the guy. Oh. Yeah. I'm just the so, just so you know, uh, everybody here, we wanted to make sure you felt comfortable. That's mm. Tank. Doesn't make me feel more comfortable. This is a bone saw. Okay, Tank. Clem! Who are these? Are these your sons? Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who'd you bring in here whoa, with you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who'd you bring an old lady in here me? with you? I did not bring her. I did not bring I her. I followed you. <laughs> I took a big nap. When I woke up, there was this strange couple in the organ room. The the get her to tie her robe. <laughs> please, Doris, could you, could you tie I her? only have a guy game percentage. <laughs> could you cinch your robe, please, Doris? I beg of you. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's, it's December. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Almost Christmas. Doris, uh, during your nap, what you missed was that the this couple, the Richingtons, and some mysterious fellow named Guy, uh, they're going to uh, replace us with a telephone, and then they're going to <laughs> build a Walmart in the in the stadium. They're clearing out the loge. It level. has walls. We don't need more walls. No, it's not a mark of walls. It's a. It's short for Walton, Sam Walton. Hey, I can't get into the history of Walmart with you, Doris. Ah. Doris, we need $10 million, or they're going to get rid of us. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes? You're telling me that's why you need the $10 million? Well, yes. That stadium, the tank, and Griff and I have been going through since we were little kids? I've been a Fire Dragons fan my entire life. I mean, it's basically where I went to elementary school. They're trying to they're trying to ruin our stadium? Yes, they are. Oh, this ain't gonna stand, fellas. You forget your ten million dollars. You know what we're gonna do? What? We're gonna we're gonna take care of this with you. We're doing this one gratis. Um Can I <laughs> Give us the names of everyone on management and we'll off them. Uh, yeah. Should I should I ask what you're going to do or We're gonna I kill him with this going? bone saw. Yeah, we're oh, gonna boy. kill him. I've tried to Claire! You never ask what they're going to do. Thanks, Doris. Oh my God, you're that Doris. Wait, wow. yes, this is the Doris. organist. Doris, the organist. I had a poster of you on my wall. My oh. mom still got it. Is the that... room's been preserved since 1947. Oh, that is sad, man. <laughs> I hope he'll come back someday. But until he does, we're going to keep this room as it is, and no one enters. Is that understood? Meow. Crystal? Crystal clear. <laughs> You're a good minor bird, Crystal. <laughs> That's freaking pathetic. Yeah, uh, sorry. May I confer with my uh, demented <laughs> associate for a moment? Yeah, go ahead. Talk, go ahead, talk to your mom real quick. Hey. She's not... Uh, <laughs> Doris. Clem! I don't know how much you can grasp of what I'm about to say. <laughs> but as much as I want to save the stadium and save the organ, of course, I kind of feel weird about people being murdered. Hmm. I just don't know what to do here, Doris. You're, even though I'm an old man, you're considerably older than I am. Yes. Can you give me any advice here, Doris? Well, let me think. Okay, but quick. Huh? Oh, uh, the... Something similar happened <laughs> in 1983. You don't say. Oh, uh, we're going to need tickets to this game or we're going to kill you and all your friends. With these Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> yeah. You keep that slinky away from me, you young hooligans. Who do you even think you are, lady? I am Doris. That Doris? We're real sorry. We're leaving. 
That was 35 years 35 ago. 35 years ago. <laughs> Did you know those guys? <laughs> Were those your fathers? Were they a different organized crime? No, that sounds like probably our dads. I, I yeah, that was a, that was our dads back then. <laughs> Is there any way you could just uh, intimidate these people, perhaps, and not have to actually murder them? Oh man, that's disappointing. Yeah, I mean, I mean we really like murdering people, but uh, we got okay. kind of geared up emotionally. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe. Uh, maybe you could murder some fans after the show oh. from the other team's fans. Let's go, boys! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Boris, they ain't done. <laughs> okay, and going over one more time the plans for uh, for our 2022 uh, uh, rebuild. Uh, we're, we're thinking about putting a, uh, a lake, a small lake into center. Field. I love looking you at water. Love, love, so love nice water. to look at water. Oh. Am I right? Thomas, I love Thomas, it. Thomas, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, uh, yes, I, I came back. Uh, um, listen, uh, there's just hours to go before it's Christmas, and uh, I just want to introduce you to some uh, friends of ours, mine and Doris's, uh, who have, uh, have something to say to you. Well, well, well. How you doing? Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna do the three. You were gonna do all three I was wells. Do all three wells, yeah. And then I thought we were doing. Anyway, anyway, we're, like in the we're in the room. Yeah, we're Keep, already. Here. All go. right, all right. So, you want to put a lake in this place? Yeah. Get rid of the organ. Get rid of Doris and her Clem understudy that no one ever really knew was playing for as long as he was. Not on, not over our dead bodies. That's right. We're gonna, gonna. Uh, I mean, I guess not kill you. Yeah. Uh, we've been instructed. Uh, I mean, to <sighs> lean against this, it. Oh, uh, this is highly irregular, sirs. I, uh, as as a guy named Guy, I'm gonna say, let's hear him out. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal. We really like these old guys. We really like the stadium the way it was. Yeah. We we don't want to change things around. We don't want you to change things around. And we're worried that if you change things around, you might change around. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh capiche? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Capiche. You're going to be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. We are starting the, this experimental prototype stadium of the future. Wait, you're making an Epsot? <laughs> an Epsot? Yes. An Epsot? Yes, we're making an Epsot. Well, surely there's a place in the Epsot for, for Doris and for Clem and for the old lady. Maybe their time has passed. Maybe your time will pass soon. Oh, it's not even our time has come, but our time has already passed. You missed your time at some point. Cle maybe me, but Clem still got a few years. I still got a few years. You know, there is a possibility that I hadn't considered till just right now. What's that guy named? Well, guy? I mean, in some of the Epsoft uh, installations, we we're going to use animatrons. These guys just do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Hold on a second. You're suggesting we chain up these two elderly in a box and have them perform for people? Mr. Richington, I, I like, like the way it. you Don't think. Don't be silly. <laughs> we'll <laughs> give them a leash and a diaper. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fantastic. <laughs> Let me tell you something, old people. I very rarely budge when I have an idea in my head. But Guy and my wife and these three, what I can only presume, are Italians. Italian-Americans. <laughs> Either way, they're really getting through to me. I'd like to turn both of you into living zoo animals that entertain the real fans as they walk through. Wait, wait. And I'll let you keep the organ in there. How's that? It's a way for people to stay connected to the past. Yes. We'll oh, look, look at we'll that. We'll charge to see you. It's 11.59. Huh. I should get going. Why? <laughs> hey, wait, so where are you wait. going, pal? Because <laughs> it's about to be Christmas. Why? <laughs> Hi, son. I just... I just wanted to check in with you and see I've, how you're doing. Invisible Dave and I have been sitting at the table for so long. <laughs> I'm seeing you. Starving over here. I mean, fucking starving. Yeah, he doesn't even eat and he's starving. Yeah. I've been staring at this plate of carved turkey for hours and hours, just waiting on Grandma Doris to get home. I don't think she's mm. coming. Tell her, tell, uh, tell him, uh, I don't think she's coming. Uh, Invisible Dave doesn't think no, she's coming. No, don't say that I say that. Say, well, say that you say it. Make oh, it your own thought. Oh, Invisible Dave, you know everybody knows about you now, right? Yeah, but they can't hear me. Only you can hear me. I, I don't think she's... What is it, Mom? Well, uh, <clears throat> your father and I don't know quite how to tell you this. What? But we have, because you're a very peculiar young man, <laughs> agreed to let a certain scientific study be conducted upon you 
for the sum of $10 million. Merry Christmas! Our family is $10 million richer right now. Oh, whoa, 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 what kind of experiment are you I'm doing I'm not on sure. Me? I'm not sure. Doesn't it was matter. an offer too good to refuse. Yeah. Invisible Dave, what do we do? Uh, I want to get myself invisibly emancipated from this family. <sighs> you are no help. <laughs> no. So, honey, if you'll excuse us, we just have to figure out something to invest our money in, because otherwise we're going to be taxed out the wazoo. <laughs> That's right. you got to invest smart, and you got to create a shelter. Listen, you enjoy. They're going to hook you up to that machine. It's only going to take about six months, they said, to start. You'll be fine. <clears throat> Okay, kid, we're uh, we're gonna implant uh, orca memories in you. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> is this gonna be like? Oh, we're like, expecting oh. it's gonna be really sad. Oh, okay, Subject okay. Subject is these, nervous. Uh, did, did, these electrodes are really starting to to itch. Are they supposed to itch? Um, no, we can put some uh, some lotion. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> they, they shouldn't. They shouldn't itch. Please let me know if they do. Well, they're itching. I'm telling you right okay, now. Okay. All right. Can we get some lotion? Yeah. Uh, this kid. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's your job, yeah, Alan. But I know. It's like we're upstairs now, and now. I, okay. Okay. He's gonna go with the lotion. Okay. But really, really, this is not part of the experiment. What, you know, what, the itching. What, what, what do orcas? What do orca memories like? What kind of memories do orcas have, though? Uh, mostly sad ones of um, you know members of their pods being taken away and uh, made to perform. Oh well, I know about my family. All right, it's just about Christmas. What did we decide on? <laughs> Here they are. Oh, Mama Doris, we knew we'd find oh, you. Who are these? Hey, how you doing? Nice to make daughter. your acquaintance. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. So hey, many people in here. I was, I was fired. I was the groundskeeper there, but uh, thanks for opening your doors to me. <laughs> it's been a real poopy day. Well, we were just thinking because we sold our son into experimentation that we would try to bring his grandmother home for one last Christmas before he goes away. What are you all up to? We have $10 million. We, <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 did you say you have $10 million? Oh, did I say that out loud? It's you just did. something I can't stop it thinking about. Out. It's a recent acquisition. What a fortuitous yeah. amount of money. Wow, $10 million. That's exactly the same amount that we have been looking I for. I feel like we were just talking about that exact amount of money. Well, young lady, uh, my, my name is Clem. I'm uh, Doris's uh, He's my partner. <laughs> we're getting oh. married. Uh, Congratulations. That's not strictly true. Uh, <laughs> well, that robe is fully open. Yeah. I have a wife of 40 years, so that's that's actually a bit of a, an embellishment. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, we need $10 million, or these uh, developers are going to put <laughs> us and the organ out of business, and they're going to change the baseball stadium. The Fighting Dragons will have no place to be. What kind? Did you make an agreement that you would come up with ten million dollars? I mean, I. Shancy. I, I did. You listen to your mother. Oh, no, Mama Doris. You give us that money, or I will take you out of my will. Oh. <laughs> she has ten million dollars. Don't let her write us out. <laughs> Wait, but if we, uh, I have an idea. <laughs> I think. <laughs> what if we invest our 10 million fresh, crisp science dollars into the saving of this stadium so that Doris can continue to stay here instead of coming home with us? Yes, yes. Well, this is where we met. I think it would be beautiful to save the stadium just as it was. And you don't want Doris at home. She's a terrible burden. No, that robe is open literally all the time. All the oh. time. <laughs> Well, it's opening day 2019, and the Fighting Dragons are uh, have a very promising season ahead. Uh, I'm here with Steve Garvey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a former later, former dragon and uh, noted coxman. Uh, Steve, uh, I've noticed uh, just a few changes in the stadium this year. What, what do you see? You can't prove it's mine. Sorry about that. Yes, it's a beautiful day here at the stadium. Some upgrades to a classic. Uh, you can see the facade's been changed, Yo, the Steve, scoreboard. Keep on fucking, dude. <laughs> you got it, baby. <laughs> and uh, just a beautiful day to be in a ballpark where the, the past and the present of America's favorite sport come together. Sorry about that, folks. You may have heard some poopy there. We're going to bleep that out and go on a uh, seven-second delay from now on. Oh, and what's that I hear? It's the dulcet tones of our 70-year running now organist, Doris. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the classics as she always does. Oh, but what's this she's segueing into? Oh, 
Oh, Doris updating the song list. <laughs> That's not from her childhood. <laughs> you go, Doris. <laughs> you go, Doris. <laughs> so what do you want to get for lunch after the game? <laughs> I, I was thinking of uh, chicken fingers. Fantastic chicken fingers. That's an anytime snack. Dip it in mustard or sweet and sour sauce. You got yourself a treat. Chicken fingers, the official lunch of my broadcast partner. And it all happened. <laughs> in a place called Spontanea Nation. Friends, it is Christmas Eve. What would you like to plug? Gags, what do you got coming up? Uh, Blood Treasure this summer on CBS. There you go. How? Uh, we got this episode 200 dropping. Congratulations. Right now. That's Congratulations. right. Congratulations. Yeah. That is uh, Mark and Hal, Mark uh, Gagularity and Hal's uh, podcast where they decide which wins. Yeah, blood or treasure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 Quick, I I'd like to plug Peace on Earth and also Goodwill Towards Men. <laughs> oh, very sneaky. We will see a little Jenna Vardy. Uh, the JV Club podcast with its new home uh, at Maximum Fun Network, uh, MaximumFun.org, and come see Work Just Players at Sketchfest. Yeah. That's right. Uh, to be honest with you, this show might have already sold out by now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this is very this exciting. Is already. Great. Yeah. That's grab very them. Check to see if you can grab any tickets. Grab them. Check them. See them. <laughs> Mark and the Jackson. <laughs> Well, I'm part of a show called Mr. Jackson and Mr. Tompkins in Detroit That's at the right. Music Hall on Friday, January 25th, 2019. Please be there. It's uh, Paul F. Tompkins and me. That's right. We did it once so far in Toronto. It was a magical night. It's a lot of fun. This will be a good show, and you're helping support a good cause. It's true. You're helping support the Detroit Creativity Project. We empower and inspire uh, Detroit school children ages 8 to 18 through the power of improvisation. <laughs> DCPimprov.org. There you go. That is a... What is the... It's a 501c3, Paul. 501c3. Thank you. Annie Savage. Hey! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! So happy New Year! And <laughs> did she just say let's go? Yes. Yeah, she <laughs> <laughs> grabbed my hand. And said, let's go. Not to be all internet or anything, but today we are all Millie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come see. Juice Player Sketch Fest, and then come see us monthly at Dynasty Typewriter. Mm-hmm. That's right. Last, last Wednesday of every month at uh, every month at Dynasty <laughs> Typewriter. <laughs> it's very precious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you to Evan Schletter. <laughs> Check out Evan Schletter's uh, non spontaneous nation work uh, at EvanSchletter.com. Also, check out Evan Schletter's own podcast, Evan Schletter's Fantastical Music Corian, where he does whatever that is. Whatever the poopy he pleases. <laughs> How do you spell Evan Schletter? It's simple and Christmassy. It goes just like this. <clears throat> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me, go to pauleftompkins.com slash live to check out where I'm going to be in addition to those shows that you've already heard about. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Merry Christmas forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti.